<laughs> okay, for those of you watching this video, we're going to do 7 through 12. If you haven't watched the other three videos, you can fill in your 27 amendments that you can study by, okay? And uh, make sure you tune in and check out the discussion over the 14th Amendment, okay? Especially uh, ladies, uh, check that out. It's pretty in important uh, knowledge for you. Okay, so you can fast forward until we write this stuff up there. Can you make it short? Sure. Yeah. Oh, you have this too. I didn't get them. So. Uh huh. This is. Who's got stuff? You got stuff. You got stuff. Okay. 
Uh, nobody's on. I, I didn't invite anybody. Yeah, just, I'm re you know, it's a meeting with myself. You should, like, in every video, start off with, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Yeah. Like and subscribe. So I saw your parents last night. Oh, so your dad. My dad gave me a new time. You saw my new dad. And I saw <laughs> Kenzie's mom and dad. I had about, I don't know, about 10, 12 parents last night. Only a couple were hostile. This is kind of So you should be writing these down after your number six, right? And so you guys, you guys, all you have to do is number 13 through 27, okay? What? Yeah, there, there's videos of those. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I labeled them on the assignments. I labeled, you know, there's a little bit of crossover on some of them, okay? So... So we'll have Monday and Tuesday all freed up. The election is on Monday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Yep. I'm scared. I'm not about you, but Yeah, I'm a little I'm scared. Let's see. Wait, what do we find out though? Well, that's a good question. Um, they have the voting through the mail now. Like yeah, in some states, mo I think most states are allowed to start counting those now, like ahead of time. But in some states, there's they can't start counting the mail-in ballots until Tuesday, which could cause some problems. Okay, uh, and then you have a couple of states I think that are allowing ballots to come in that are postmarked by the third, which could be you know the seventh or the eighth before they get all the ballots in. Now. 
which states those are exactly, I'm not sure. Um, so if, if we know Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, um, Texas, Arizona, I mean, a lot of the states we, we know. You know what I mean? We're going to know. Georgia's going to be, we know how Alabama's going to go. Oklahoma in 2016 was the most Republican state. Trump won by the biggest margin in Oklahoma than any other state. And I think Connecticut, or Ver, no, Vermont was the biggest margin of victory for Hillary. But it's the bluest state. You got the bluest and the reds. So, um, yes, I hope we know Tuesday night. I hope. Well, I was confused. Like, um, I know we're gonna like make fun of it. I saw this on TikTok. They're they're having some fuss about like uh, Texas. Uh -huh. I don't understand what's going on. I guess supposedly like it's more democratic now. Uh, well, the demographics are changing. So they have a lot of immigration um, from other states, okay, uh, because they have so many jobs down there. People are moving from other states. And some of those people that are moving from there are Democrats, okay? Um, now, if you're moving to a place that is going to provide you with a good job and a good living, Maybe you should adopt their policies that are providing for that, but eh, maybe some are not. You understand what I mean? Like, don't move here from New York and turn us blue type of thing. And there are billboards in Texas that say that. Um, and then, of course, you have a lot of Hispanic uh, um, immigration and then, you know, people that are naturalized become citizens and so forth. So, uh, yes, demographics are changing. Um, however, I think that... Uh, from what polls are showing, like Hispanics um, are, there's there's quite a bit of support for Trump there. So it may not, you know, and then you're seeing more African American support for Trump than you normally would for a Republican. So you got a lot of different demographic factors going in here. And so um, I don't think Texas is turning blue, but I mean, the polls are showing it close. Um, the biggest, I mean, the, the closest thing we have to looking at that was the last Senate election between Ted Cruz and, I don't know if you know who Beto O'Rourke is. Um, he's kind of a young, hip guy who's running for the Senate. Um, and, you know, Ted Cruz was in a, in a tough fight for his life, the Republican. And Cruz won, but it was a pretty narrow margin. So that led people to believe that, well, with that Senate race, okay, and part of that might be some people just don't like Ted Cruz. They might be Republicans, and, and then you had young people voting because this Beto guy was kind of cool, you know, he was a skateboarder and, yeah, a socialist and stuff like that. So you got the young people going, you know what I mean? So uh, in a national election, we'll see. Okay. All right, let's talk about these, okay? So the Sixth Amendment was a fair and speedy trial. And as uh, people were walking out the door, I was talking about, uh, speedy trial is about 120 days, uh, but oftentimes defendants will ask for more time to build a defense uh, for the prosecution, you understand? So they may ask for more time, okay? But uh, if you don't have a trial within 120 days, they got to cut you loose. Um, most people are able to get bailed out of jail by then, okay? Uh, sometimes you have, um, you know, crimes that they won't let you out while you're waiting for trial, okay? So if there's a first degree murder charge, they may not, they may keep you and hold you over till trial. And that would be 120 days they would have to give you one or cut you loose, okay? Um, and any cases involving uh, over $20. Now, guys, um, $20 in uh, 1789 is a lot different than $20 today, right? Uh, but the Constitution is, is clear. So this is a strict interpretation. It would be $20 today. Okay. Uh, you could still get that jury trial. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, no excessive fines or bails or cruel and unusual punishment. Okay, and this goes back to the English founding documents, yes? Uh, do you remember which one? Is it in the Magna Carta, Petition of Right, or the English Bill of Rights? English Bill of Rights. Okay. Third one. Okay. This is something we adopted. Now, and when we first talked about uh, in the first weeks with uh, the death penalty, right? So the death penalty, um, when they wrote this amendment in 1789, they were still hanging people publicly. Okay. So you wouldn't, I mean, if you were looking at it, you'd say, well, then the death penalty is not cruel and unusual. Well, in 1976, the Supreme Court, which was very liberal at that time, um, said, yes, it is cruel and unusual. And part of that was because of some of the methods they were using to, to carry out the death penalty, like old Sparky in Florida, the, the electric chair, okay? And, you know, people were being electrocuted but not dying. And their skin was burning and it smelled really bad. And people said, this is cruel and unusual, okay? And so the Supreme Court said that. Uh, four years later, they did the Supreme Court did something they don't usually do, and that's overturn an earlier decision. And they said that uh, the decision of, of the death penalty will be left up to the states. And so the states can determine whether they feel it's cruel and unusual, and they don't have it, and some states don't, and some states do. Okay, Some states have it, some states that have it don't use it, like Kansas. Okay, We haven't used it since it's been reinstated. Although we do have people on death row. All right. Uh, so, basically, guys, the punishment should fit the crime. Okay? So, if you're shoplifting, uh, in Saudi Arabia, they used to cut off your hand for shoplifting, and they had very little shoplifting. But does that punishment fit the crime? I don't know if you want to live in that society. Okay? But you would have very little crime. Like, they have very little crime in Saudi Arabia. Okay? They have very little crime in Singapore. Okay? It's illegal to spit on the sidewalk. Okay? <laughs> then you throw up in the parking lot. Thank you, Lexi, for... Throwing that out there. <laughs> okay. Uh, number nine. Uh, Will did a good job with this because this is a little bit hard to understand, but uh, it is, uh, look, they can't, they can't put all your rights in the Constitution. They can't cover everything. What are you drinking? Are you allowed to drink water? Do you have a right to drink water? Where? Where does it say that in the Constitution? Uh, say it. Say it. Number nine. In the Ninth Amendment. <laughs> okay? Because it's not mentioned, but you have a right to do it. They can't list everything. Okay? Um, so just because it's not in there doesn't mean you don't have the right to do it. Okay? So it's kind of a, an umbrella amendment. Okay? And the tenth is similar. Okay? So if you look at, if you look at, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those five amendments protect people that are accused of a crime. Okay? Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay? So civil liberties there, all right? Um, obviously, three is quartering soldiers. Two is the, the right to bear arms. And then you have your freedom of speech, press, assembly, and all that. And the one, and number one, okay? Uh, which are fundamental to... Uh, our existence, you know, as, as fundamental to our freedom as people to pursue our own happiness, okay, without government control or tyranny, okay. But 10 protects the states. 10 says if that power is not listed in the U.S. Constitution or given to the national government, like coining money, declaring war, okay, if that's not a power that's ex expressly given to the national government, nor denied to the states, those powers are reserved to the states, okay? This goes back to the idea of federalism, 
This reinforces the system of federalism, the sharing or division of power between national, state, and local, right? The Tenth Amendment is the reserved powers amendment, okay? And one of my favorites, okay? Because most people don't really pay attention to federalism, and this amendment backs it up, okay? So nowhere in this document, in the Constitution, does it mention the word education. It's not in there, okay? So if it says nothing about a power given to the national government over education, then who controls education? The states or the people, okay? So we have a state board of education. We have USD 259, which is a local government. USD 266 is a local government. They run the education, not the national government. You ask, Mr. Ebright, well, then why in the world, Mr. Ebright, do we have something called the United States Department of Education? If they have no power to do it, that's a good question. I scratch my head and wonder why as well. Why we spend billions tens of billions of dollars every year with the U.S. Department of Education. And somehow, guys, this country survived from 1776 to 1976 without a U.S. Department of Education. That's when it was created. I don't know how we did it. All by ourselves at the state and local level, we educated our children and created the greatest world, you know, country in human history. Economically, militarily, we created the, the, the greatest country in history without the national government getting involved in education. It's amazing we were able to do that without the help of the elitists in Washington, D.C. Come on, guys. I'm being cynical. Okay? Could you tell? Okay. Like, how... Early on, could you tell? I, I don't know. Okay. Because right. sometimes I feel like I'm doing this. Okay. All right. So this thing cropped up early on in in our new in our new country is that people from other states were suing each other and they were suing other states. Individuals were suing states. It was just a mess. Okay. And people would have to travel to other states to get sued. It's like, this is crazy. We got to fix this, okay? So they said, if you're suing somebody in Colorado, guess what? You got to go to Colorado to sue them. You can't sue them in Kansas. Okay, so if you buy a car off of uh, Craigslist from somebody in Colorado, and you go out there to Colorado, pick it up. Or let me give you a better example. You uh, really want to have to buy Siamese cats because you've always had Siamese cats and your kids want Siamese cats, well, they want cats. And, and I say, well, if we're gonna get cats, we're gonna get Siamese cats. And so you start looking for breeders of Siamese cats and you can't find any in Kansas. So you find the cat lady in Colorado. And so you drive all the way out to Colorado to meet with the cat lady. And the cat lady's got a, a pregnant Siamese cat that was impregnated by another Siamese cat. And those cat kittens would be available um, four months from now. So you say, okay, I want to buy those two kittens or the kit, some of the kittens. I want two male Siamese kittens. Seal point. Because there's blue point or seal point. Okay. And so we go out after four weeks uh, or four months or whatever and go back out to Colorado to the cat lady and see the little kitty. Okay. And the cat lady says, and I've already paid for these cats, okay, uh, or partially put down a deposit. She says, well, one of them's a male and one's a female. I'm like, well, I really was hoping for two males. Because female cats, no. Okay? I've had them. They're not good. I mean, they're all right. But male cats, they get along better. They are a little more playful not as catty. <laughs> so we get the cats home. Okay? And uh, you take the cats to the vet. Okay? And the vet tells you, well, you have two female cats. 
<laughs> not one male and one female. You have two female cats. Now, I paid for two male cats. Put a deposit down on two males. Now, I could go sue the cat lady, which means I would have to go all the way back out to Colorado and take these two cute kittens away from my kids and my wife and give them back to her and get my money back. And if she didn't get my money back, I'd have to sue her in Colorado. True story. <laughs> that happened. Okay. So our two female cats have male cat names. Max, okay, and Manny. <laughs> Wait, what do they tell them like that right away? Like if they're a boy or a girl? Like when you... uh, kittens are hard. I, you oh. know. Uh, so Maxine. And Mel Manuela. Okay. <laughs> Manuela? No, Manny, Max. All my cats always, and I've had cats my whole life, I've had Siamese cats my whole life, and everyone starts with an M. These cats respond to that sound, the M sound. Yeah. So when Mojo and Mickey died, <laughs> we replaced them with Manny and Max. Still alive? Yeah, Manny and Max are alive and well. They're like three. Oh, yeah. So you did sue them? Wait, no, I did. Gonna... I did. I wasn't going to take the cats back. You know what I mean? They were too cute. But Max is great. Manny only likes Lily. They get along, which is good. Because if you get a male and a female cat, sometimes, I mean, Ma Ma Mojo and Mickey fought the, their entire life and never got along, never played together, never bathed each other. And when they were both old and blind at the same time, <laughs> they would bump into each other. And these cats are like 18 years old and they'd start fighting. They were blind <laughs> till their death. They did not get along. That's why I wanted two males. You have two females, and one hates me. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to, you know, milk this, okay? You at home, just fast forward, okay? All right. Um, 12, okay? Now, this is, this is kind of a fun one, uh, because when we first started electing our president and vice president, the person that finished first would be president. The person that finished second would be vice president. I mean, we've got some great combos here. Hillary being Trump's vice president, okay? Uh, Mitt Romney being Obama, you could probably see that because Romney was a moderate, okay? Or John McCain being Obama's vice president. You could probably see that, okay? But go back to uh, George Bush and Al Gore, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, you would have had some serious problems. And, you know, you might get in some situation when things got heated where, you know, the vice president might think about knocking off the big guy. So he could take his spot. So we're, we elect the president and vice president on the same ticket, the same ballot, okay? So one and two together is 12. Uh, uh, you get it? No? Yeah, you got it? So you elect number one, the president, number two, the vice president together, one and two together is 12. It's an easy way to remember it. I know. It's called a mnemonic device. Wow. I did that a okay. lot. So did they come up with that like six amendments ago, and they're like, we got to save it for the 12. I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, now, guys, the other videos are filled with wonderful stories, not cat stories, but uh, wonderful examples and some mnemonic devices if you want to if you want to go through it, um, or you can just you know open the file at the end and write them down. Uh, but I do explain a lot of these. Uh, I spent a lot of time on one through six. Obviously, 14, 15, you want to listen to. 16, 17, we've talked about in here. Uh, 18 and 21 is prohibition repeal. 19 is women's suffrage. We know that. 20 is the lame duck. My history students know that. Uh, 22nd, two terms for the president, two, two, two. 22, two terms. Okay. 23 BC gets three electoral college votes. Okay. Uh, before that, BC did not have the power to, uh, people couldn't vote for president, and vice president. They had no electors. Okay. 24 is no poll taxes. 25 is presidential succession. There's some good stories on that. 
26, uh, 18 to vote. Uh, 2 plus 6 equals 8. Team to vote. Okay. <laughs> and then 27, there's a good story. Uh, 27 was actually proposed along with the original Bill of Rights, but wasn't ratified until 1991. So it was like floating out there for 200 years, and somebody grabbed it and said, let's ratify this amendment. Okay. And I tell that story, which is a pretty good story. Okay. But I'm going to cut this short because I don't want you to have to spend too much time watching videos. So Monday and Tuesday, guys, we are going to uh, do all lecture stuff fun. I'm not going to record. It'll be relaxed, and uh, we can focus on politics for a day. And um, then I got a day on federalism. Okay. So you guys, I'm going to sign the amendments in your book. Okay. Now, how do you want to turn that in? Um, normally what I do is have you write number one to 27 and then just put the answers. It's, it's matching. It's a matching assignment in your book. Um, I could put a file with one to 27 up as an external link, like I did the Federalist paper one. And you could just put in the numbers or the letters. I, 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 it's paperless. Yes. You know what I mean? I have my paperless one. Okay, bring it up. I'll, I'll put it in. Did anybody else not turn it in online? Oh, it wouldn't let me. I don't know. You can give it to me in person. Okay. All right. Peace.